Hello everyone, in this video we're going to install TinyCore. It's basically a very light Linux distribution specifically tailored for old systems. The installation process is not that simple. You have to use the repositories to download the utility that will later on let you burn the image into a drive. Fortunately, there is a graphical user interface that will let us install the operating system without much hassle. For this install, we're just going to use the whole disk, the default options for the file system and configuration, And that's literally it. We just installed the whole operating system in 10 seconds at most. Now all we have to do is reboot into our system. Now that we're in, we can install some applications to figure out what this thing can do. I could have used the terminal for this, but the graphical app is way too simple. All you have to do is load the mirror, which is automated anyways. The first application I'm going to install is NeoFetch. I just want to see what we're working with. I'm guessing the doc package is just for man pages and documentation, but I could be wrong. And there we go. NeoFetch runs fine, but there's no ASCII image as you see. Maybe the developers didn't even care to implement that, as you can see with like Linux from scratch, which lets you configure it yourself. So with this method, you can basically install whatever you want, as long as it's in the repositories. In the repos, there's a package that is called Firefox Get Latest. With that package, you can install everything required for Firefox without really tampering with dependencies or anything like that. The script does everything automatically. While it is installing, I have to mention that uh, I tried this OS on my laptop and it worked fine, but it didn't detect my hard drive without it being set to IDE mode. So if that's an issue, maybe you have to install some third party driver or something. and you can browse the internet as usual. I tried going to my website and it worked fine. Uh, the fonts were rendered correctly. It can handle latest CSS and JavaScript and whatever you would expect from the latest Firefox version anyways. A test I always do with these operating systems is to compile a program without using anything external. I try to download everything from the repos and compile a small hello world uh, executable from GCC. I already have Vim installed, so using that we will just print hello world to the screen. Compiling that did not work. What I initially suspected was that we don't have the standard C library installed. And I was right, upon downloading glibc, it works fine. I also tried gimme, genie, I really don't know how it's spelled. It's just a text editor that works quite as expected. It's very minimal and it's like 10 megabytes anyways. I prefer Vim though, so I'm not going to write anything in here. The final test was VLC. Being a graphical app with a bunch of dependencies, I was not sure if it would run or not. To my surprise though, 
The massive quality hit to the video is not due to the window manager or VLC itself. It's just the display driver that's not quite configured correctly. The control panel follows the general theme of the OS. It only provides you with the bare basics like configuring a wallpaper or looking at some basic hardware configuration. But at the end of the day, if you really want to do something advanced with this thing, you will be forced to use the terminal interface. It's quite good. It honestly was very small and quick to install. It ran great even on older systems. And they would actually recommend it for people that cannot use anything other than Windows 98 on their ancient Pantheon. So, if you enjoyed this video, consider dropping a subscribe, and until the next one, stay safe everyone.